G'day! In today's video I'll be explaining how to set up your traffic lights to manage potential conflicts between motor vehicles and pedestrians. This video won't specifically be talking about bicycles, but some of the same strategies can help bicycle traffic too. The first type of conflict between pedestrians and motor vehicles occurs when pedestrians are still crossing the intersection when vehicles are given a green light. This type of conflict is a much greater issue with intersections on very wide roads, which pedestrians require more time to cross. The Realistic Walking Speed mod magnifies this issue even further, as it makes pedestrians walk at a slower but more realistic speed. To avoid this conflict, we should split the traffic light into two steps. The pedestrians will get a shorter green step than the vehicles, followed by a clearance interval where pedestrians who have already started crossing can finish, but pedestrians who have not yet started crossing must wait. We also need to ensure that the green phase for vehicles is long enough that pedestrians can complete a full crossing. Elderly sims have the slowest walking speed. This table shows how long it takes them to complete a crossing of streets of different widths. The main point is that you really want to use narrow streets in areas where you have a lot of pedestrians to minimize the need for long clearance intervals. The second type of conflict happens when turning vehicles and pedestrians both have a green light. Vehicles have to wait for pedestrians to cross. You will have to disable right turns on red at the intersection because that's a terrible policy for pedestrians and must be disabled for any of the solutions I'm about to show you to work. First potential solution is the leading pedestrian interval. The leading pedestrian interval is known in Australia as an early start for pedestrians, which tells you what it is. The pedestrians are given a green a few seconds before the vehicles are. Let's see what that looks like in action. As pedestrians wait to cross, they form a queue on the either side of the street. If we give pedestrians an early start, then half of these waiting pedestrians can cross far enough that they're no longer conflicting with the right turn vehicles when the vehicles are given their green light. This reduces the number of conflicts with pedestrians. This is a good strategy to use when turning traffic has to share a lane with through traffic, and it has less impact on motor vehicle capacity than other strategies I'm about to show you. The downside with the leading pedestrian interval is that the vehicle-pedestrian conflicts are only reduced and not totally eliminated. If your intersection has exclusive right turn lanes, you can do a variation known as the leading through interval. This allows vehicles travelling parallel to the pedestrians to also have an early start, delaying only the turning vehicles. You can see that intersection in action here. Both the pedestrians and the through traffic are given a few seconds head start over the right turning vehicles. The leading through interval has even less impact on capacity than the leading pedestrian interval, as it allows a longer interval. It's also really good when the majority of both vehicles and pedestrians are travelling in the same direction, parallel to one another. Although it doesn't need exclusive right turn lanes at the intersection, they are advised, otherwise through traffic can get stuck behind a vehicle waiting to make a turn. But if we do have enough right turning traffic to make right turn lanes worthwhile, we should use them by providing fully protected right turns. The diagram on screen shows how this might look for a four-way intersection, but I'd actually like to talk a bit more about T-intersections. With a typical signalised T-intersection, all three pedestrian crossings conflict with turning movements. We can improve the T-intersection for pedestrians by banning the through movement that occurs alongside the left turn into the side street and moving one of the pedestrian crossings to this stage. This already makes it so much better, but if we have a right turn lane on the side street, we can have a protected right turn as a child phase of the left turn phase, removing one of the other conflicts. And if we have a right turn lane on the other approach, we can also add a protected right turn that occurs in that third step, removing the third conflict. Let's have a look at this in action. We can see that all turns are fully protected, and this totally eliminates the pedestrian vehicle conflict. One downside, however, is that it requires you to have an exclusive right turn lane, which means that you may have to make do with fewer lanes for other vehicle movements, or you might have to widen the road and narrow the sidewalk space for pedestrians. For maximum efficiency, you'll also need to have an appropriate parent phase to move the right turns too. This is usually a non-conflicting left turn movement, or a through movement, or both if you have very heavy right turn volumes. The ultimate traffic light setup to prevent conflict with turning vehicles is the exclusive pedestrian phase. Let's see this one in action. It's actually fairly simple. You just have an entire signal phase for all the pedestrian movements, and then for the rest of the cycle you don't allow any pedestrians to cross while the vehicles are moving. This kind of treatment is really good for intersections that have many pedestrians who want to cross to the diagonally opposite side. However, in city skyline sims can't cross diagonally, 
So in this case, just make sure that du the duration of the pedestrian step is long enough for a sim to cross the intersection twice to the diagonally opposite side. A disadvantage of the exclusive pedestrian phase is that it massively reduces the capacity of the intersection for motor vehicles. It's worth noting that in any case where the vehicle capacity of the intersection is reduced to accommodate more pedestrians, you could compensate for this with strategies that improve capacity for vehicles, such as banning left turns or using one-way streets. There are also two other elimination techniques that can be used to remove the conflict between pedestrians and vehicles, that is, full pedestrianization of the streets and grade separation of the pedestrians and motor vehicles. In a typical car-oriented city street, the focus is on accommodating high volumes of car traffic with limited space for pedestrians. You may have many lanes of fast-moving traffic and an unpleasant environment to walk. However, as the street is shifted to become more pedestrian-oriented, pedestrians are provided with more space. The lanes for vehicles are narrowed and vehicle speed is reduced, making it easier for pedestrians to cross. Full pedestrianization is where all vehicles except emergency services are prohibited from a street. The entire width of the street can then become a shared space where people can walk without the threat of vehicle traffic. Pedestrianization can then be seen as the ultimate step in transforming a street to make it more pedestrian friendly. Grade separating pedestrians by forcing them to use overpasses and underpasses is often seen in areas with high speed vehicle traffic like highways or rail lines where it's difficult for vehicles to stop and allow pedestrians to cross. However, grade separation may not be the best fit for city streets with traffic lights, where vehicles are regularly stopping anyway. Although grade separation does eliminate conflicts between pedestrians and vehicles, it also has some significant drawbacks, such as high cost, taking up valuable space in urban areas, and causing longer pedestrian routes with more detours. Additionally, if grade separation involves stairs, then realistically it would be more difficult for people to use them if they have disabilities or are using bikes. This means that grade separation may not be the best solution for pedestrians in city streets. As a city builder, you have the power to create streets that prioritize the safety and convenience of pedestrians. I hope you use the information in this video to truly put people first rather than cars first. Don't forget to like and comment on this video and subscribe for more city building tips and tricks.